Welcome everybody at this beautiful month of June, the, the craziest weather. I'm here, I'm excited because I have a brand new guest that has a story to share with all of us, Ms. Chandra J. Stevens. Hi, Sandra. How are you? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. It's an honor to be here. Thank and, it's, you. and I am so privileged and overjoyed about the whole situation. I, I want you to know that from my heart. Thank you. Tell me your story. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> my story, I have been um, afraid. And I always tell people this story only because I want to empower everybody, not just women. I want to empower everybody to understand that no matter the age, no matter the fears, and no matter the insecurity, go forth in what God has called you to do. I've been writing since I was 18, and I have been afraid to step out and to do the things that you know God has told me to do. And once I made up in my mind, I was 48 years old. I'm 50 now, I just turned 50. And God has placed so much in me. I write songs and I've been producing, you know, and directing, you know, films. I put out my first um, short film, If I Pray, okay. and that has done phenomenal. And I'm so proud of the short film. Um, we have been a part of the Black Hollywood Education Resource in Los Angeles. We were a part of the Sisters Are Doing It For Themselves virtual film festival. We were part of the Cranford Film Festival. We are one of the winners of the um, James Lafayette Toll Scholarship. Um, we've just been, this is my first time, you know, doing anything like that, but I just made a decision to follow and do what God told me to do. Like I was done. I was tired of being scared. I was tired of being afraid. I was tired of feeling like I wasn't good enough. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And I've been writing ever since I've been doing plays. I write my own songs. You know what I mean? I got singers under me. It's just a whole big company that I, that, you know, I'm trying to, you know, put, I'm putting out there and moving forward and I'm excited about what's coming next. We're working on the second film. For I'm excited friends. too, because first of all, you're a black woman, and this is our time, and let us shine. And the idea that you're spreading this love and this, this entertainment is just something that everybody kind of like grabs home to. You know what I yeah. mean? And it's yeah. so natural to us, particularly because we used to always see these things and see these other people doing it and other people be portraying us and other people writing for us. Yes. And it's such a beautiful thing now that we exist and we have our own existence and we have our own writers. And we and I mean, honestly, we could have been doing it years ago, but fear. Tell yes. me about that. What made you become a lion and roar now? <laughs> I have been through so much. I am a survivor of domestic violence. Being bullied as a kid, you know, never fitting in. You know, I've always the skinny girl, just with the glasses and, you know, just everybody always pointed out the insecurities, but there were some people who, you know, saw the, the gifts in me, my great aunt, my mom, you know, and my kids, once they found out what I could do, they were like, why aren't you doing this? You know what I mean? But I was always scared, just scared that I wasn't good enough. And there came a time where I was at the end of um, a domestic violence situation. Okay. And even in heartbreak and everything, I said, you know what, God, I don't want to be afraid anymore. I don't want to, um, I don't want to be in this situation anymore. I want to do what you called me to do. I said, I'm putting everything in your hands, my kids, my relationships, everything. I'm putting everything in your hands and whatever you tell me to do from this point on, I'm just going to do it because putting everything in my hands, it wasn't producing me anything because everything was led by fear. You know what I mean? So I just decided that, you know, I was done. I don't want to do this anymore. Once I put everything in God's hands, it was him that moved me into having more confidence. My confidence in him gave me confidence in, um, because he was teaching me everything that I needed to know. He was guiding me and it was just me following what he wanted me to do. It wasn't me per se saying, oh, okay, I'm just going to, you know, I'm woman, hear me roar. It was like, no, I just want to do what God wants me to do. And every time he told me to do something, I was like, okay, you know, I had to follow my spirit. I learned meditation and, you know, praying and yoga and just being in my center and just learning those things and learning me. God was not giving me the excuse of being afraid because I was leaning more on him than I was on myself, if that makes sense. Okay. I can understand that. Your spiritual room. It's also your pattern, like your blanket, your security. And as far as emotionally, it helps you to subdue the opponent. And what I mean by opponent is whatever is out there that, that you're faced with that, that, that's haunting you to where you feel sometimes a little afraid. But inside you, you're, very, you're a warrior already, from what you told <laughs> me. 
So it just needed something that happened to really make that jump out. And, and right. that spiritual room was a way to come out without being violent or attacking it or facing it in an ugly way, but a more right. civilized manner. And right. that's really nice. Yeah, and that's where my material comes from. It comes from that place. I want people to, you know, understand that being, you know, in the church or because people see the church as this religious, you know, thing. It's not about being in the church. It's about a relationship. And my movies and my films, especially if I pray, it's more about, yes, you know what I mean? We, we're going through, this is real people going through real stuff, you know? And sometimes we think prayer don't work. And, you know, I prayed for years and it seemed like my life was falling apart, you know, while I was praying, you know what I mean? But it's just a matter of having hope. It's just a matter of understanding that there is a greater power and there is a God, you know what I mean, who watches over all of us. And even though it may not look good, you know, it doesn't mean that it's to your demise. That's exactly true. I, I respect that. And I, you know, being in um, the community at large and, and the women, for some reason, they've seemed to lost their uh, spirit for knowing how important they really are, especially yeah. they are queen for whatever reasons. Uh, and you just brought to the light and you shed some light on some of the things, but there's so many where they just don't have that hope. Now, hope is so important. Now, with the hope and the action, that's it. And then you're also creative. So then your creative nature is taking effect, too. At the, you're one of those people that just have so many characteristics of goodness that you can bring together at your own will, that you yeah. just didn't recognize it before. I did. I that, had no that, idea that what I do now, I could ever do. <laughs> and it's a good thing. Yeah, I had no idea. I go to domestic violence meetings, you know, with women. And I, I, one thing that I try to encourage them to do is to not dwell on what you've been through, but to grow from it because I had to grow from it. I had to learn, you know, to, to make new memories for myself. I had to, you know, create, you know, me. You know, I had to love me. And so women, we can be so angry. I know that I could have been enraged about everything that I've been through. You know what I mean? But I didn't, you know, God didn't want me to go there. I had to learn how to just trust in him. And that's what I did. And I didn't let any situation, the domestic violence, even, you know, on the red, you know, the brink of being homeless. You know, I've, I've been there, you know, with okay. my kids, okay. um, dealing with, you know, rent heights and all that stuff and just trying to see, am I going to live in my car? Like, there's just so much hopelessness out there, but God didn't want me to focus on that. Right. He wanted me to focus on him and trust in him. And I try to encourage every woman, you know what I mean? Just find your center, believe in yourself, and don't let these bad things that we have been through define us. And we don't have to react to those things in a violent way. We don't have to defend and protect ourselves to the extent that we're doing something, you know, that we shouldn't do. God will protect us. God is with us. And I had to learn that, you know, he protects me. He covers me. He keeps me. And I've learned that every single step of the way. I love this. This is really going to be so helpful for our women out there because I know of several women, I just wish they could sit right here on the side and listen to you right now as they or uh, some young ladies that I, that I know are absolutely afraid to even come out, afraid to be around men, afraid. Um, and I mean parents like you, grandparents, you know, and they're, and they're afraid. And even to where I see them as, not that they ever gave up hope or anything, but I see them, it demise their mind so much, maybe a big portion of mental illness. And um, that situation, I mean, there's also the hope part. They what, was born again or saved at the, one of the churches maybe about a month or so ago. They seem to, to be doing better, but just won't, um, won't come out at night or want, you know, these kind of struggles. Somebody like you that's saying this, I can't wait for this show to run all over the world, honestly, <laughs> because things happen in mysterious ways. Um, and I, for one, always believe in cause and effect. A lot of these negative energies, at some point, the positive is going to destroy it. I believe that, and that's well, real. And that's what you're describing with this. I am just overwhelmed. What are the names? Yeah. Tell us some of the names of the movie that's coming out. In it. If okay. I pray, we already have, it's a short film. It's like maybe less than 15 minutes. 
out there. And that's the first thing that we put out there. It's already on YouTube. If I pray short film, Shonda J. Stevens. My company is Ugly Girl Productions, U-G-L-Y. And I gave it that name. The Holy Spirit gave me that name because ugly has always been a negative word right. in my world. Yes. And I flipped it. And ugly to me is unique, gifted, loved, and yielded because those are all the things that I am. That is the reason why. <laughs> sister, that's powerful. I love yes. that sister. So it's called Ugly Girl Productions and it's already on YouTube. It's been on YouTube um, for two months now. Um, and it's just literally just giving an insight on people really going through, but trusting even if a little bit of faith, you know, the faith of a must to see, to see change. You know what I mean? And I like to be realistic, you know, in writing things because you put out fiction, too much fictional stuff. It's not real. People are living in real life situations. My situation was real life. Absolutely. And I was dealing with, you know, mental illness and depression and all that stuff. And that is the reason why I had to deal. I had to tap, tap into my spiritual side, my center. And every day, you know what I mean? I may not be able to pray or meditate or do yoga, but I had to learn those things. And me learning those things, I had to, I found, you know, my center. I was able to stabilize my mental stability, you know what I mean? And knowing that it's okay, what you've been through is okay, but we're still gonna move forward. I was depressed this past holiday and I was like, you know, God was like, no, we're not wallowing in this. We're making new memories. We're, we're erasing all that old stuff. So I got up and I decorated and I made new memories, you know, with okay. my kids. Okay. I had to, and that's what women have to, to do. do. Yeah, we have to not wallow in what we've been through, but we have to press forward into something better and more positive for ourselves, for our kids. Absolutely. And that's what I had to do. And that's what I did because I was really, I was depressed. I was, I was a mess, <laughs> but I had to come out of that. Absolutely. And I thank God that I had to come out of that. And I thank God for the sisters, um, the sister circle with Avanzar Women's Center. They were there for me and they helped me grow through everything that I've been through. Um, my mom, my kid, like everybody was just like in my corner. Absolutely. And I thank God. I thank God for that. So Absolutely. I, my message to any woman out there, you know, don't let it define you. Right. You define you. Fight. I love it. Yes. I love it. Yes. No matter fight, the fight, age, fight. no matter and the never age, give no up. matter the fear. Just and never forward. give up. Yes. Because there's up. a plan that's shaped for you, that's designed for you. Yes. And your loved one. Have the courage to go ahead and do it. Be a lion, not a little right. cub. I love yes. it. Yes. I love it. Amen. I love it. I do absolutely love it. And God I love the good. idea of sharing it with the community. Not yes. keeping all of the goodness to yourself, but actually <laughs> going out, dropping the seeds. Some will, some won't. So what next? Put them right. out there. Make it universal. Right. I love the idea of that. And that's what, of course, when you get to the next level in the whole motion picture. I went to a thing at Columbia maybe about a, like about maybe about a month ago mm -hmm. where they had situations and little short films where they were showing things in Africa, but actually... We have just as much negativity going on here as well. Right. It's like, you know yeah. what I mean? And they yeah. and they didn't say that the women couldn't put them in because it was a, you know, it's a global thing when they go around the world. But right. I am going to mention to these people your name oh, and give them the thing. Most God of the movies you. was about half an hour to like uh, maybe 45 minutes or 40 minutes. So yours is a little short, but as you're working time, I know it's gonna get there. Yeah, you know what I mean? we're working on our second and film. And they might wanna have to guess you to come there and talk to them too. With oh. all the young college students and all the people at uh, that's not really happy with the way the world is going. Yes. Actually, particularly for all that we've done to make this world good for us to be denied all of the benefits from it. It's not, it's right. not right. You know and I mean? we don't even want to be defined by what's happening in the world. You right. know, go forth anyway. You know what I mean? Right. My finances is not, you know, the best right when I started this, you know, and even now, but I have to go forth in faith. We have to go forth Absolutely. in faith, you know, and just keep reaching. If it doesn't work out, keep going. That's if right. If it doesn't work out, keep going, but don't stop. And I had to do that for myself. I'm not going to sit here and tell nobody to do nothing that I haven't went through and I haven't been going through. Okay. This has been a long journey, but I thank God you yeah. know, that I'm still here. I thank God that I'm still pressing and he's still with me. And none of the past is defining my future or my present. That is the right, ha that's what's happening right now. Which is beautiful. Amen. Sister, <laughs> that is wonderful.
Amen. Because when you think like that and so much positive energy and so much positive action, you know, you run the course, you win the race, you don't drop yeah. out. So yeah. that's one thing I, you know, I'm not even knowing, but I can just tell that your kids know exactly what to do, how to go about it, and they know the, the difference between somebody strong and somebody weak. Yes. You know what I mean? And so you yeah. have sons, so I know that they know the power of a good mother yeah. and a perfect example of this world. Nobody ever said it's going to be easy. It's not going right. to be easy for, for people of color anyway, period. Right. That's the exactly. bottom line. Exactly. It never was. It never will. We could, se we could celebrate on Monday and, and nobody, still not one of us got even one coin exactly. for everything that land that was ours that was taken from us and, right. and, and, and even today if any kind of storm or anything happens anywhere in the world and our things our, our physical papers titles and deeds are destroyed they right. say you gotta go yeah. You, you, this couldn't. This you, you couldn't. This couldn't have belonged to you. You gotta go. Go. Go to Texas. Go to here. Go to, you yeah. know what I mean? People that been their families raised there, and all, let some some kind of disaster happen, and everything is destroyed. The places where you could go, that they just look at you. Oh, it couldn't have been your. Uh, you, you gotta go. We, yeah. Don't worry. We're gonna give you ways to get out but we ain't worried about when you get there don't worry yeah. about it you better handle your business yeah and, you know yeah. the same way like from slaves from one place to the next way you know well you can't work hard no more i could get mm -hmm. somebody the, the guy is going to trade me somebody young you got to go to the next plantation maybe in tennessee now and i mean we know the same old story the same story goes on for us for yes Yes. Five, six hundred years. Yeah. And women, believe it or not, were the ones being abused that kept the family together. Beat, right. be the ones being beat, the ones yes. picking the cotton, the ones seeing their children pulled away from them and slowed. Yes. The man beat because the master wanted the, 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 the women that could cook and know how to make things and stay in, 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 the, in the quarters, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, and uh, the, the truth is the truth. We don't have to dwell on it because it's not going to do anything. Right. But just the idea of people in the government wanting to pretend like that never happened. Don't get rid of all of those books that tell the truth. Yeah. We're not going to tell them the truth. Exactly. We're not going to say we beat the black women to, to death or we made them, you know. No, nobody's going to say nothing. Exactly. But the one <laughs> thing that they didn't break you know what I mean? The one thing that they didn't succeed is at those women, they never gave up. Absolutely. They were very strong. And they like, died with pride because they knew that they were doing the right thing for their children the best they yeah. could. They got so wets all on their bodies with, with exactly. trying to protect their kids. Exactly. Some will so even did, can, didn't even make it. Yeah. But, and if they can go through and persevere through that, then who are that's we? how much we can. Yeah. Why can't we still go forth? You Absolutely. know what I mean? There's we no excuses. To, You're right. We can't, yes, we can't let our bodies define us. You know, right. so many women, especially these young girls, they're being defined. They want to be defined by their bodies. They want to be defined by who loves them and what, who, no. We're defined by who we are. Absolutely. And who we make ourselves to be. We cannot let other people define us. No. And that we goes can't. for men and women. You know yep, what I mean? Absolutely. Children. Anybody. We right. have to, we create our own Well, stories. you know, the women love the, their sons and daughters the same. They don't want nobody to hurt their sons. Exactly. They don't want nobody to hurt their daughters. I they, got a son and a daughter. And yep. daughter. Yep. Yes. Don't so, come for my babies. Yep. <laughs> that's it. You better not come here because that's the only time when perhaps they right. might get some kind of some type of violent reaction. Mama bear comes yep. out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the only time, particularly if they're really young and small. Yeah, that's the only time that we would really maybe lose it because you're yeah. trying to hurt our babies. If it so be it, if it's our life, but yes. you know, and um, I say that all the time. time. You can come for me, but don't come for my kids. kids. You know, don't yeah. come for my kids. Yes. And then more so when your grandchildren come here. You love yeah. them just like, you know what I mean? Because you know uh -huh. when you look at your son and your daughter, you gave them everything. But now this is the young one now that you want to, right. you may not be around all the time to see them 
and maybe we can be. But just because right. the way we think, we right. want to teach them right. the values that you want them to know. Exactly. And you want to teach them the certain recipes that your our grandparents taught us. Yes, yes. Because the problem is, I don't know, and, and this is why it's so wonderful that you're writing these things and, and filming these things. Remember, we didn't have nothing, but we would all sit at the table to, to eat whatever we had to eat or drink. Yes. yes. But this day and age now, we don't have that anymore. Right. It's the computer and the games and the kids yeah. Yeah. that... Um, Unfortunately, that's where it's going. They know more than we do. My, my grandbaby's one, and she can click those buttons so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know just what you mean. And... Uh, so and they fast. grew up on it, and then and and then I still try to like give my great my great grand uh, niece and I the books to read, cause then I know that they have the computer and the pads and everything. But what do you think is gonna happen to the books in the next twenty years? Yes. Are they gonna really know? I mean, so many things that I've seen already gone. That's that uh, that we we had. Only thing that we could relate to, like say the Jetsons and things like that, that we should watch, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But as far as the Fred Flintstone, when the, that day and age where people actually went out to walk and went out to do play that, kickball that, and yeah. football and all that stuff, on, yeah. jump rope and uh, even uh, just simple things. Yeah. yeah. I, um, the parks would be always full. Could you ever yeah. go by the park in the summertime or springtime without the the boys playing football, baseball, yeah. basketball, whatever they like, or soccer, whatever. You right. can come outside and the parks are bare. Beautiful yeah. outside. Yeah. And yeah. that yes. disturbs me. So I'm so glad that you, your consciousness is going to write things about that and put that out for us before it's to let them really realize the beauty in small things. Yeah. Things don't have to be uh, guitars, and uh, but the music part is good if they play in music. But these things yeah. that the kids, not even exercising, getting on, riding around, yeah. kids, yeah, not walking. Can yeah. you believe it? I mean, <laughs> kids and, and parents are getting them these things to get yeah. on and go around. What about walking yeah. and running? Just and roller up. skating or ice yeah. skating. <laughs> what is yes. yes. I mean, you see so many of them, the bikes. I, okay, I know with the pandemic, that was a little safer than putting your children on the bus or the train if they could, if they didn't have too far to go to school or whatever. Right, yeah. But uh, now, I mean, we at least we knew how to ride a bike. They're not yeah. the people. I see them. Knocking the people down when they get off the bus. Like, you know, when you step down off the bus, they zoom in so fast, they're knocking the people down. Yeah. It's just a, a consciousness it's, of the no world. No respect for the elderly at all. Right. right None. Right. And it just takes one person to make a, a difference. You know what I mean? And if we could step outside of, you know, ourselves and our pain, because mental illness, you know, is, is rapid. You know, oh, yes. kids and adults. And sometimes a lot of people don't even realize that they're dealing with mental illness. And that is the reason why, because it's not dealt with, where it's going from generation to generation, we're, we're teaching it to our kids because we're not healing. We're, it's going down to the kids. You know yeah. what I mean? And the kids don't know what to do, so they just do what they see. Exactly. They're like sponges. It's yeah, not their fault. And, and that's the problem. Yeah, so it is. They're doing what they're seeing. If it's nothing but violence around them, that's what they're seeing. Because the mental illness needs to be dealt with, no matter how small or how big. Yeah, the absolutely. Mental illness needs to be dealt with, and we need to stop putting band aids on. All these doctors do is they give medicine. We give medicine. No, we need That's to get terrible. to the root yes. of That's mental another illness, thing. so it won't go down from generation to generation. Because what we do, we teaching our kids, and their kids is teaching their kids, and it's just going down, and everybody's running them up. Yeah, and nobody's making a difference. And even in If I Pray, it talks about, you know, kids and, you know, having you know, one of the girl, her um, dad's in jail. Mm -hmm. The other girl does not have parents, but it's just... Um, oh, I had a lot of that when we were oh. running Picture the Homeless. Oh, we had a lot of people without parents and kids. Here's the difference with the world. We see the people coming here now. They never did anything in America, never got nothing. And they have the homes. The people here that have been struggling, had a hard time, 
people are, people are here like this. If they lay in the street forever, it's okay. And it's okay. talking to themselves and doing all kind of things, yep. they don't care. But as soon as they push somebody or hurt somebody, it's a big deal. Yep. I say and that these all people, the time. And these people living in the street, and when they were together, they paid taxes or whatever. And if they were too young, why is it that? I mean, when I was a kid, when kids didn't go to school, they, you know what, Miss Stevens, I have to bring you back because <laughs> our time is up. Okay. And you are so spiritual and powerful and such a wonderful person in this world. Human I thank being. you for having me. I, I, I thank you for sharing this beautiful story that's only going to blossom more. And, I, and, and I, when it happens, I'm going to try to make it to that show live when you're standing there on that red carpet Amen. with all of the people there. Amen. <laughs> and um, just the joy of what this human society and people really mean to you is just beautiful. Your thank spirit you so is God beautiful, is and thank I you. thank you. And my mother said that all the time, <laughs> and all the patriarchs in my family all the time. Yes. And bless you as well. Thank, and you, thank you so you. much. Please come back because I'm. I, I can't wait to talk about your next. Yes, I definitely will. Artistic you know? creation, whatever it may be, I want to know all about it. I'm here for it. All right. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a great God day. Bless, bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.